Uh, okay, right, so I'm going to quickly show you how to um, make an object where the material inherits properties based on the rotation of the object. This is something I haven't been able to find online, um, or the solutions I have found have been very complicated and involved custom shaders or writing custom scripts. This will be a simple, quick method. So you're going to open a new project, which will look like this. Press A to select everything, delete to get rid of what's in the scene. I'm going to create an arrow uh, as my object because usually when I'm doing this, it's to represent a vector. So very quickly, Shift A, add a cylinder, I said, uh, to make that a bit longer, um, and then add a cone, GZ to move that up scale it up until it's big enough, shift click them together and control J to make them the same object. If I want to change the length, I can use face select mode, select the bottom face, GZ to extend that to make it as long as I like. Uh, we're going to shade this smooth as well. Um, so for that, I'm selecting everything in face select mode, shift clicking on these two surfaces to remove them from the selection, right clicking shade smooth. There we go. And just one more thing for neatness, uh, using face select, select the bottom face, shift S, 3D cursor to selected, tab to go back into object mode, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now the origin of this object is at the base. End to bring out the end menu, go to the transform and move that up. And that just means it rotates neatly around the base. Okay. Um, that's just setting up the initial object. The important part of this is the shading of this object because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this so that the color of the arrow changes depending on the projection of the arrow onto the z-axis. Um, this is particularly useful for me because I work in Spintronics. So animating uh, sets of arrows representing spins and their relative direction is something I do relatively often. So we're going to go into shading mode here. Uh, in this menu, turn it to viewport shading. And actually, while I'm at it, in the uh, render properties, I'm going to go into cycles and put this into GPU mode, just so I get good quality. And I'm quickly going to add a light to the scene, add a sun type light, just change that orientation. There we go, that's fine. OK, uh, so we're going to add a new material. By default, when we add a new material, we get a principled BSDF shader, which outputs um, a surface material output that's interacting with the lighting engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this base color controlled based on the orientation of this object. And the way we're going to do this is uh, with drivers. <coughs> Excuse me. Having a sip of mead, if you can believe that. Um, okay, so shift A to the add menu, and we're going to insert a value. So this is a very simple node component. All that this does is um, output a float value that we can plug into any of these value nodes. But what we're going to do is we're going to make this value be driven by the transform of this object. So right click on the value field and click add driver from the drop down menu. When it goes purple like this, uh, that means that this value is being driven by a driver. So a driver is a uh, inbuilt script that exists in Blender that allows you to access a property that's somewhere else in your Blender project and input it as a uh, variable that drives some other property. In this case, we're using a scripted expression type driver, which means that we can write an expression in this field and it will use the variables that we have tied this driver to and output a value based on that expression. So at the moment, it's taking a variable, which we'll define in a minute, and adding 0.5 and outputting that. We don't actually need the 0.5, we just want the variable at this point. And um, here's where the variable is defined in this box. We have a couple of different types of variables. We can have a single property, which can be anything. We can point to that um, using a Python script. We've got transform channels. So these come from the transform properties. If I press N here, these are all the transform properties. 
we've got rotational difference, which you might think would be the best way of achieving what I'm trying to do, which is to change the color of this arrow based on its orientation. But the thing about this is that you reference the rotation of one object with reference to another. We could create a hidden object and define everything relative to that. But what I'm going to show you is maybe a bit adapt more adaptable because you can actually uh, change exactly how you want it to depend on rotation. So you could have different colors and different axes, for example. Um, and we have relative distance of an object. We're going to use transform channel. And the transform we're concerned about is the cone, which is the basis of this object here. So from this object menu, we're going to select cone. And the type that we want is the X rotation. So that's its angle uh, around the X axis. And here's the important point. In mode, we want to go to this drop down and select quaternion. So um, I'm not going to assume you know what quaternions are. Quaternions are a four coordinate system for dealing with rotations. They come from a prelude to differential calculus. Um, all you need to know for the purposes of this discussion is that in this transform menu here, we have rotations around the X, Y, and Z axis. But if we input a angle into, for example, X, that is not the actual transform that's being applied to the object. The transform that's being applied to the object is a quaternion transformation, which takes this single input and, and translates it into a four input quaternion that actually performs this rotation. Um, you see quaternions come up a lot in programming. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% au fait with the maths behind it, but that's all we need to know at this point. So this depends on the X rotation, but it outputs the quaternion value of that transformation around the X axis. So if we look at what this actually does, if I rotate my arrow in X, you can see that this value has now changed because it's being driven by this value. If I put this to 90 degrees, then this ends up not as you might expect being 0 0.5, halfway between plus and minus Z, it's actually 0 0.7. If I put it to 180 though, we end up with a one in here. So again, this is showing you this is not a simple translation of where this arrow is on the X rotation. It's a bit more complicated than that. If I increase it beyond 180, you can see I now go back uh, to uh, 0 0.707, but it's now negative. I don't want this to be negative. I want to take the absolute value because I don't care how far it is around a full arc. I only want uh, 0 to pi, basically. A, it's rotation around a half circle. So if I take the absolute value, that will give me that output. OK. Now, this is only giving me the rotation around X. It's not telling me anything about the rotation around Y. So if I use this output to control this color, I'd get a color change as I rotate this around the X axis, but I wouldn't see any change if I rotate this around the Y axis. If I rotate this around Y, we can see this stays zero. Okay, so what I actually want to do is duplicate this and add another driver, exactly the same as before. So I'm typing abs var and just the same the object is the cone and the rotation now is around y and it's the quaternion output okay so now if i rotate this around y you can see i get a change in this output if i put this to 90 degrees you can see that i get 0 0.7 but now critically if i now put x to 90 degrees as well then both of these values change because remember this is the quaternion output it's not just the output of this rotation and this relationship between these two is crucial because if you can imagine in this uh, concept here I want this to change color as it goes from pointing in the plus z direction to the minus z direction but if it's pointing at 90 degrees and then I rotate it around this plane I don't want the color to change and that's what I'll get through this because no matter how much I change the y value now the sum of the squares of these two values is always the same, no matter how much I change this. Okay, so to make this work, what I then need to do is take these two outputs and take the sum of the squares. So if I put in a math node, 
and I change this to power, change the exponent to two, and then plug this variable into here. Duplicate that and plug that variable into there. And then again, take another math mode, leaving that as an add and add these two together. The output of that will be exactly the projection of this arrow onto the plus minus z direction. So to make this controller color, I need to add a color ramp. This gives me a factor here, which is just a single float value that controls the blending between two colors. By default is black and white. To change this, click on the marker on the left hand side, click on the color bar, and we're going to change this to blue. And then on the other side, click on the node color bar, change that to red. And I'm also going to put one point in the middle, which will be green. So I'm crossing one side of my color triangle, which is how these things are typically depicted. Take the output value into the factor and then the color output into the base color of my principal BSDF shader. And now if I click on this and I rotate it around X, you can see that it changes from blue to red as it goes from the plus to minus Z directions. If I rotate it in Y, you can see it does the same. It goes from blue to red as I rotate. If I rotate it part way in X and then rotate it in Y, it changes to the appropriate color depending on the projection of this vector onto the Z axis. So that now gives me exactly the behavior that I want. And I could now take this arrow object with this shader make a network of them to represent magnetic domains or use this to represent a vector or a single spin or whatever I wanted to and use this color shader to make it change color live depending on its orientation. So I could create animations with this. Uh, I'll show an animation of a skirmion that I did earlier using this method on the screen. Okay, I hope that's useful. This is not something I found on any forums or any discussion boards uh, wherever um, changing the color of an object with angle is discussed. It's always incredibly complicated and involves a lot of coding. This is a nice simple method that just use the in, inbuilt flowchart uh, system, node system for Blender. So I hope that's useful.